The liver cells of our body are responsible for bringing down glycogen into glucose and then using that glucose to actually regulate the glucose levels in our blood. But once that process actually takes place, and once the glucose levels in our blood return back to normal, the liver cells must be able to actually terminate and shut down glycogen breakdown. So this is what I'd like to briefly focus on in this lecture. So we're going to examine five different ways by which liver cells of our body are capable of shutting down glycogen breakdown. Now, the first way by which, or the first method by which our body is able to actually shut down the glucagon signal transduction pathway that initiates glycogen breakdown is to stop releasing the hormones that initiated this process in the first place. So in this particular case, it's glucagon. So glucagon is no longer released and what that means is glucagon can no longer act as a primary messenger and so this pathway will no longer be initiated. It. Now, the second method is the G protein. So the G proteins involved in this particular pathway, namely this G protein shown here, actually contains an intrinsic GTPase activity. And what that basically means is, sometime after this process actually turns on the G protein, the G protein itself has the ability to hydrolyze the GTP back into GDP. And what that does is, is it turns off the G protein. The G protein returns back to this location here. And once the G protein dissociates from adenylate cyclase, that turns off the catalytic activity of adenylate cyclase and that stops transforming ATP into CAMP. So number one or A, hormones are no longer released and B, G proteins have an intrinsic GTPase activity which allows them to basically turn themselves off. Now what also happens is, in the cytoplasm, we basically have these proteins known as phosphodiesterases. And these phosphodiesterases, what they do is they begin to basically transform the CAMP cyclic adenosine monophosphate molecules into AMP. Remember, in the glucagon signal transduction pathway that initiates glycogen breakdown, the CAMP acts as a secondary messenger that is used to basically basically activate the inactive protein kinase A PKA into the active version of PKA. But now that we are no longer producing cyclic AMP as a result of the inactivation of the adenylate cyclase, and because the CAMP are being transformed into AMP, the PKA is no longer activated. Now let's move on to D. So in D and E, what we basically want to do is we want to inactivate the phosphorylase kinase that is needed to activate the glycogen phosphorylase. And we also want to inactivate the glycogen phosphorylase that is ultimately needed in step one of glycogen breakdown. So let's focus on D. So essentially, in order to, uh, in order to inactivate the phosphorylase kinase, what happens is the PKA must phosphorylate the alpha subunits of phosphorylase kinase. So the same PKA that is used to activate phosphorylase kinase is also actually used to inactivate phosphorylase kinase. Remember, when PKA phosphorylates the beta subunits, that activates this. But when PKA phosphorylates the alpha subunits, that causes the phosphorylase kinase to become a good substrate for another protein known as PP1, which stands for protein phosphatase 1. And what happens is, once PKA phosphorylates the alpha subunits, the, uh, the phosphorylase kinase acts as a substrate to protein phosphatase 1, and protein phosphatase 1 basically dephosphorylates the beta subunits of phosphorylase kinase, and that inactivates this molecule. So, 
pKa phosphorylates the alpha units of phosphorylase kinase, which in turn makes it a good substrate molecule for protein phosphatase 1, PP1. And PP1 removes the phosphoryl groups from the beta subunits and this deactivates the, uh, the kinase. In addition, the same protein phosphatase 1 also actually acts upon glycogen phosphorylase and it deactivates the glycogen phosphorylase by removing those phosphoryl groups. So once we deactivate the glycogen phosphorylase, the glycogen breakdown process can no longer take place. So this is basically how our liver cells and generally our body basically shut down and terminate glycogen breakdown in the liver cells of our body.